Hey everyone, Ravenous here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. When we last left off, we were getting some of the backstory about Rao Bond and our Sultana here and their history. And we are left with the question of what is Rao Bond going to do now that Alan Mingo is free? Now, I have a couple theories about what could happen. Is And part of the problem is essentially Rao Bond's story arc is complete, or character arc is complete. So either he will become the new ruler of Alamigo, which is what people think he's going to do. I don't think he's going to because we saw it in the last episode that in the flashback, he swore to Nanamo he would serve her for the rest of his life. So that leaves with two options. Either he's going to do that, or actually, no, technically that's the same option, but either he's going to stick around with, Sult with the Sultana or he's going to die. So, I'm not too sure, but I think having him not around will jumpstart Nanamo's character arc. Anyway, let's see if we can find out what's going to happen today. Alright. We must make haste. My absence will not go unnoticed by the Sultan's sword for long, and there are other places I would visit. To the or or Oh, wow. Arzanath... Or Sorari. Okay. Is that the black the 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 Oh it's the thaumaturge area. Okay. I do I think I knew that as the ossuary, but still those strange words. So let's head over there. Luckily it's nearby, so. There she is. When the calamity threatened, Rauban led the alliance forces in uh, forces into battle on the plains of Cartno, and I remained here. I prayed with all my heart that Archon Louis would have the power to rouse the twelve. Make sure everything's working properly. Okay. Since that day, I have made a custom of visiting this shrine during each of my little excursions. Here, I seek the blessing of, of Thal, reflect on my choices, and ask myself if I am fulfilling my duties as Sultana. You are, ri you are rightly celebrated as a champion because you, you have led the line in hundreds of battles for the good of Eorzea. In much the same way, I believe the measure of a monarch lies in how much she leads her people in times of adversity. If I am to be Sultan a Sultana worthy of the name, I cannot turn a blind eye to the troubles facing Wildau. I have chosen my path, path, Ravenous. With Alamigo now freed from Imperial chains, I will I finally see a way to aid the refugees. Good. Already, many displaced Alamigans seek to begin the long trek home. To facilitate that process, I have made a small contribution an artisan school in Rogers Reach to any who wish to learn new trades. Realistically, however, it will take years for such training to yield tangible benefits. But we do not ha have but we do not have years. These people need shelter and employment if they are to survive, and this time the Al the old on treasury shall provide. Precisely where and how to allocate the necessary funds is, of course, another question. Uh, let's see. Might you ask a member of the Syndicate for advice? I don't trust the Syndicate. Why not seek the advice of one who employs refugees? Maybe I think that would work better. A wise decision. May have a visit to the Gold Saucer is in order. Its proprietor is a member of the Syndicate, and he is one of the few who pay who pay refugees a fair wage. Yes, that's Godbert. Yep, I wonder if you're acquainted with Godbert Manderville. Damn right I am. He's one of the few in the Syndicate I do trust. Well, technically Rao Bond's part of the Syndicate too, so I trust him. But you gotta be wary of, that, uh, of the Syndicate as a whole, because you never do know when you might deal with one of the bad ones. Then I need not explain his eccentric nature. Let us make our way to the 
to the landing, and I will see that word is sent to the gold saucer. Godbird should be only too glad to receive us. Wow, Godbird is part of the main story. Weird. Because he is usually just part of the... He's been a part of holiday events and, of course, the Hildebrand line. This is the first time we were actually dealing with him in the main story. I kind of like that. I've ridden aboard public airship before, but this should be my first visit to the Gold Saucer. I must confess to some to some excitement. So, uh, me? Who's this? I've never had so much fun. That Manderville chap certainly spared no expense with this saucer of his. I only recently found out that uh, trip to the gold saucer from Ulda is free. Helpful. So, but yeah, I, I like having Godbert part of the main story now. this way I have heard descriptions of its splendor yet I never dreamed it would be so bright and inviting well it's kind of the point no I couldn't possibly we do not keep come here to fruit away the royal coin Godbert will be expecting us come let us head directly to the lounge and ignore these these gaudy temptations she wants to play all right, lounge right over there. Man, it should be just as fast to run as it is to teleport. Unless it's upstairs. It is upstairs, but... <laughs> I know my way around. I believe this this is where we are to beat Master Mandeville. Shall we sit, sit while we wait his coming? Yeah. My apologies, Your Grace. I have kept you waiting. I'm sorry. I can't do. A, I. I. The voice I have in my head for Godber, I cannot put into words. So. No apologies are necessary, Godber. My request was sudden, and you were uh, and you were kind enough to make yourself available at such at such short notice. When my son's good friend and the Sultana herself are coming, there's no more import, important engagement. I will be doing the Hildebrand lines for you guys, so don't worry about that. As for the purpose of my visit, I would have your thoughts on how the Crown might best aid the refugees residing in Thanalan. You are aware, I'm sure, that many Almegans displace sons and daughters long to return to their newly liberated homeland. And you are you are also aware how they will suffer without shelter and work to sustain them. I would use our nation's wealth to spare them that, that suffering. What what advice uh, would you have for me on the matter of how, how it might be best distributed? distributed? The, the unusual circumstances of our meeting and your grace's choice of companion would suggest to me that be a desire for an honest and unvarnished opinion. I shall give you one. My advice to you is stop. Taxing Uldaz well to save Almegan refugee is a terrible, terrible idea. You oppose my proposition? Most emphatically, I agree with your grace that that the refugees must have housing and employment. What profit it, it, is there for Ulda in this arrangement? Profit? After all you've done for Giravanius' place, I thought you the very last person to seek benefit for their benefit from their mis from their misfortune. Forgive me, Your Grace, but you appear to be laboring under a mis uh, uh, misapprehension. It is a fine endeavor to show support to one's fellow man. I fear, however, that your stance is one born of pity. Your intent is to save the refugees, is it not? <coughs> I 
for all our potential, we are we are uh, indolent creatures by nature. If unconditional if unconditional charity is all we know, then we will begin to rely upon it to expect it. And then we must consider Ulda's own poor now trodden. Should they hear of you spending nation's coin, not to improve their lot, but but to nurture the citizens of Alamigo, it is unlikely they will applaud your generosity. Surely it, will, it, it is not your grace's intent to foster new resentments, but to spread goodwill. Indeed, that any support I pledge to the refugees must promote self-sufficiency, while also serving the, the, the interests of the people of Ulda. Exactly so. Such an arrangement will create a far more equitable relationship with the returning Alamegans, even as it generates the revenue required to win the approval of your subjects. You have given me much to ponder, Master Mandeville. I thank you for your candor. That's why just handing out cash doesn't work. I'm surprised they put that in here. To really help the poor, you must make it so that the poor have the, the, the ability to help themselves. Okay. Prophet, the thought never crossed, never even crossed my mind. Ah, oh, maybe cat pot. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. The standing about lamenting my naivete will not do anyone any good. I shall consider my lesson learned and press on. Ravenous, are you perchance acquainted with with any successful merchants? If my attempt at philanthropy is obligated to reap profit, it would seem wise to consult someone with a knack for business. I don't know who I'm suggesting. Huh. Okay, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Hancock. Huh. Ordinarily, I, I, I would not trust any agent at East Arnold Trading Company, but if you hold this Hancock fellow in high esteem, I am content to, I am uh, I am content to be led by you. You may repay my faith by journeying, journeying to the distant Kugane and speak with him on my behalf. Eager though I am to visit those shores, I do, I have not the leisure uh, for a lengthy sea voyage. Now, assuming you will travel as adventurers are wont, are wont to do, I shall await your report by Aetherite in Ulda. Uh, by the Aetherite in Ulda. A fair, uh, a fair journey to you, Ravenous, and a swift one, if you please. Okay, I'll be swift about it. Alright. And teleport we go. That's really expensive. I changed my teleport uh, costs. So, yes, definitely use a ticket on that one. So, yeah, I changed around my, my favorites to help me on my off time, my, my basic farming and whatnot. But it's not as good when you're going to random places quickly. That's why I have those tickets. So a few left. All right, and he is over at the Ruby Bazaar. Teleport again. Hop, skip, and a teleport away. All right. Yep, yep. He's just asking if I want to enter. Which I do. <clears throat> Alright. Revenus, to what what do I owe the pleasure? Or are you here on business? Business, actually. I beg your pardon. Her Grace of Sultana would have my opinion on how to best invest how how best to invest the wealth of Ulda. My dear Ravenous, I, I have to thank you for this recognition, I am sure. I am flattered that you've come to me, truly flattered. But why settle for a, for a lowly apprentice when you can have the master? <coughs> sorry. Upon matters of profit, there is no... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> water. Water. <coughs> Here we go. What, but why settle for a lowly apprentice when you, get, when you can have the master? Upon matters of profit, there is no living soul better qualified to advise her grace than Chairman Lola Rito, a man whose, whose morning exertions 
are said to fill his, gar his, his garter robe with gold. I'd be happy to do a range of meeting for you, say, at the Scion's former headquarters in Thanland. The Wiki Sands would be a suitable, suitably neutral venue for negotiations, don't you? Don't you think? Very well, Revenus, and may you have, have may your dealing prove fruitful. Okay, teleport back. Luckily, that one's free. Honestly, I would rather be dealing with Hancock because he wasn't involved in that whole assassination plot thing. Ugh. But it did turn out to be more complicated than I originally thought. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, there she is. Welcome back, Ravidus. Did your merchant friend have any useful advice to share? Yeah, talk to Lola Rito. With Lola Rito? And you agreed to this? I am well aware uh, of his standing in the field of business, but I had hoped to keep the monetarists at arm's length, and him in particular. Nay, I cannot live in fear of the man. I must learn, learn how to treat him if I am to rule Ulda effectively. Very well. I will meet with Lolarino. Let us, let us go on ahead with Waking Sands and prepare for his coming. Okay. Uh, dealing with Lolarino is not fun. Whoa. Free teleport. Awesome. I am pleased with that. So this is where the Sayas first congregated. I have heard many tales, but never had an occasion to visit. To work then. The hour of, of, our, of the meeting draws near, and I would gather my thoughts. Pray see to it that we have the appointed room to ourselves. Oh, we're chilling in this room, huh? That'll work out. A personal summons from the science. This must be important business indeed. Though, if it concerns anything so underhand as an assassination, I fear I can be of little help. Ha ha. <laughs> Disguise. <laughs> Kinda. You have made your point. It is indeed unsettling to find oneself seated across from an impassive mask. Whoa, he's actually taking it off? Not that there, would this better please your grace? Or should I address you as Lady Lillera? Hmm? I mean, there's nothing really surprising behind the mask, but... Nay, the deception has served its purpose. I'm glad to see you found amusement in my little jest, Lord Lollarito. But shall we proceed to the business at hand? By all means. I must say, I am most eager to hear your proposal. Simply put, I would aid the refugees camped in Thanalan in their efforts to return to Alamigo. The reparations you paid in the wake of your earlier misdemeanors will be used to fund the endeavor, together with the fortune seized from the late Teleji Adeleji's estate. But this plan is not intended to benefit the displaced alone. I would make of this an investment which shall enrich Uldar and Alamigo both. And who better to consult on matters of profit than the wealthiest man in all of Thanalan? I beseech you then, Lord Lollarito, share with us your mercantile wisdom. 
It would seem your grace has matured beyond acts of earnest yet misplaced charity. Pray tell me more. He still sounds evil. Now hopefully they're treasuring El Amigo. To summarize, in return for facilitating the repatriation of refugees and assisting in the establishment of new industry in Alamigo, you ask that a proportion of all subsequent profits be promised to Ulda. Huh, I am impressed, Your Grace. It is an elegant solution. Albeit one lacking certain crucial details, specifically which industry and where. How swiftly you identified the weakness in my plan, just as I knew you would. Your travels have taken you across the length and breadth of Gear Abania, and you know the land far better than I. Uh oh. Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Which has the greatest potential to flourish, given the appropriate investment? Uh, do you begin? Oh. Now, the Saltery was the one in the locks, and that was pretty busted up. Uh, Alagiri is the one that had the cross that was pretty much the staging point between the capital. That was a, kind of a trade post. And Alagana was the farm area. I don't think Alagana... I think the saltery, because the, the use of the locks and the salt could be a benefit. So it was between that or the trade post. That desolate little village on the shore of Loch Seld. Yeah. I know the Saltry and its products well. The Imperial invasion brought an end to their more widespread distribution. Much to the dismay of many a wealthy gourmand, myself included. Salt has ever been a transformative ingredient. Yep. And in this instance, I dare say it could transform a modicum of effort into a mountain of gill. The local citizens will need to be consulted, of course, but I trust the East Aldenar Trading Company can be relied upon to provide its assistance in negotiating a mutually beneficial arrangement. Plus, this puts these uh, these citizens closer to Al the, the Alamegan capital itself, which is where they want to go. <clears throat> Naturally, Your Grace, I shall dispatch representatives well versed in the extraction of this white gold and wring every last ons of profit from its production. The Loch's bounty will contribute to Alamigo's enrichment whilst easing the burden on the bull's aching shoulders. Just as Your Grace desired. Yep. <clears throat> Deal is struck then. So this will let the, the refugees move back to the area they want to and, and have work at the Saltery, which is probably one of their best resources. Uh, I fear it'll be many years before I feel comfortable comfortable taking part in such negotiations. But I shall not complain. We have piqued Lolorito's interest and secured, his, and, and, and secured his invaluable expertise. Thank you, Rodas. I could not have done it without you. Uh, buddy, thank you. Alright. Securing the Saltery. Our course is decided. I shall return to the palace and have my ministers begin work on implementing the particulars of the plan. If I could... Pr uh, prevail upon you one more time, Ravenous. I would ask you to convey the details of our negotiation to Commander Hext on, on your return to Alamigo. Okay. My thanks again. Together we have laid the groundwork for an endeavor which promises to benefit the peoples of Alamigo and Ulda both. Yay! Time to teleport back over here.
That's another expensive one. Use a ticket. Use one of my free tickets. I'm gonna run out here pretty soon. But I think I can turn company seals into tickets now. I'll have to check that later. Okay. Welcome back, Ravidus. How was your your audience with Asaltana? In your absence, I've kept myself busy catalog, uh, cataloging the riches of the Mad King's Trove and calculating his worth in guilt. I have some way to go, but the figure is already quite staggering. Oh, uh, greetings, Ravidus. I'm actually in the middle of reporting the, to the commander here, so... Yeah, don't just give this money to the citizens. You need to set up foundations for things to grow. Ravidus, you're back. What did Nanabo... Uh, Nanabo... Oh, sorry. Are you allowed to talk about your audience with the Sultana? So, Ralphon says he's going to return to Ulda, but she isn't sure he wants to. Huh, tell us something we don't know. But I'm pleased to hear she is committed to helping the refugees come home. It is plan to re and this plan to re revitalize the solitary does make a lot of sense. Uh, quite how, uh, quite how you convince her to seek Lolorito's help is, a, is another question. After all, a after all that's happened, he was the very last person I expected her to turn to for advice. Last person I wanted to. But on a more practical note. Lise, assuming the intern government elects to accept Uldav's proposal, I have one caveat. About, I have one caveat. I, I should like to like you to include in the bargain. El Amigo must be permitted to cover a portion of the investment. We have a fortune at our disposal, after all, and allowing Uldav to provide the entirety of the capital will afford Lilarito too much control. Honestly, Alfano, it's like Kugane never happened. What, uh, what exactly does a ruthless profiteer have to do to earn your trust? But yes, you do make a good point. First things first, though, we need to discuss the proposal with the Saltery's residence. residences. Whiskar, how do you fancy explaining the Sultana's plan to your grandfather? I'd like to hear what Watt thinks of the idea before agreeing to anything. Right away, Commander. Uh... Would you mind coming along, Ravenous? I might need you might need you to fill in the details. Then I shall come come as well. Should Watt wish to discuss figures, my knowledge of the nation's finances may prove useful. Ugh, oh, nation building. So much work. Why am I not punching things? I need to punch a monster. I'm leaving the business uh, the business of dividing up the treasure to those who know know about such things. I'm not proud to admit it, but every time I see a column of numbers, my eyes glaze over. One of these days, I'll have to ask Alphano to explain it all to me. I'll have to give Nanamo my thanks when, next time we meet. With this and everything else that's ha been happening, it feels like things are really uh, gathering pace around here. Gathering pace around here. Okay. But I think I'm going to have to fly over there because... Wait, where's my... It's over there. Yeah, not... Well, technically that other one's a little closer, but with low time... Maybe not. So, we'll fly over. I don't know how close we are to the end of the, this story, so... I'm at the point now, it's like, we're, we're doing cut episodes. I know I'm at the, uh, I, I'm just about at the, the half hour mark, but I'd hate to cut it if I only have like five or ten minutes left of this. Which could easily be the case. Because everything that we've done in this, this part of the story is seeming to wrap up now. <clears throat> yeah, here's, here's the saltery. They have to rebuild everything. <clears throat> Sorry. Which uh, they seem to be doing. Alright. Let's go see Granddad. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, let's go see Granddad. He's going to want to hear this. You know, he's standing right there. 
ideally, one would want El Amigo's steak, uh, steak to match Old Da's gill for gill. In company, combination with ironclad contract, it should serve to prevent Loderito from making off with all the profits. <clears throat> what manner of mischief brings you youngins to Old Watt this time, eh? They want to rebuild the saltery, saltery, granddad. Ravenous, tell them about the deal. Here's a deal that I am not going to actually say out loud. Well, bugger me, I never had, we never had the coin or, or the hand to put to put the place back to how it was, but it sounds like that's about to change. There's one small wrinkle in your plan. It doesn't account for all the nasties que queuing up to eat anyone who goes near the shore. The king used to send soldiers to call the buggers, but the Imperials weren't about to, to help the likes of us. Don't worry, Granddad, we'll take care of that. Commander Hax has been taking, uh, talking about starting up regular patrols, and I'm sure she'd assign me to, to assign me the lock if I'd if I'd ask, if I asked. I'd appreciate that, Whiskar, my lad. Truly, I would. So does that mean you're you've gotten better with that blade of yours? I've been training, I, but mostly to kill Imperials. You uh, you have some experience hunting monsters, don't you, Ravnus? Think you can cast an eye over a few of the local beasties and tell me tell me how to deal with them? I would have punched a monster. Let's not waste any time, but I'll see you, see you by the lock. While you uh, whilst you are busy with the t attending the local fauna, I'll I shall have Master Watt ex explain to me exactly what is required to restore the saltery to its former glory. Good hunting. Just my heart good to see youngsters like my grandson giving their all to rebuild the country. Feels like anything's possible. Needless to say, I shall impress upon our friend here the singular importance of securing a fair contract with his old odd benefactors. Yep. Don't want to be taken advantage of. <laughs> 